Hello class, for this lecture I'm going to provide a broad overview of information management and then describe one tool that we use at CDC, Enterprise Risk Management, that is really grounded in, in the information management efforts that we engage in. The simplest definition of information management is the collection of information from one or more sources and the dissemination of that information to one or more audiences. In this context, management reflects the organization's control over the planning, controlling, structure and organization, processing, evaluating, and reporting of the information. The information in this context can come from a variety of sources, including internal sources, external sources, data and reports, records and files, or the media. The objective of information management is to use information, good, bad, or indifferent, to meet the objectives of an organization. So for instance, my division at CDC collects data on heart disease and stroke rates in the United States. The data is cleaned and reported out via medical and health journals and tends to be very technical. My team identifies significant data findings and works with our scientists to expand the dissemination of this information to other audiences beyond just the science community, to include our stakeholders or partners, Congress, the executive branch, and the public as well. In doing so, we keep the interested audiences up to date on the trends in cardiovascular health nationally, identify areas that need more focused attention, and communicate what the public can do to address challenges identified in the data. As public servants, it is critical that we cultivate a variety of sources capable of generating information for us. These two main sources of information are internal sources, like your subject matter experts who are developing baseline data for your agency, or colleagues who work in related fields. So for instance, I meet monthly with my counterparts in our nutrition and tobacco divisions to share information with each other because their efforts and focus areas are intertwined in mine, and it benefits everyone to share information and collaborate. This can also include other parts of the agency. In a large agency like CDC, having insights into the top priorities of the agency and how that impacts your division's priorities is important so that you and your organization leadership are well prepared. Additionally, external sources are also a critical source of information, especially given their ability to speak directly to other parts of the executive and congressional branches that are not always accessible to a CDC division. Um, so, for instance, we have regular conversations with our colleagues at the American Heart Association, and they provide us updates with what's going on on the Hill, how their interactions with OMB are going, and any insights they can offer us into what's happening uh, politically that might impact us. As your text dis discusses, building networks is critically important to accessing important information and utilizing it effectively. Finally, one other technique that you would need to use in terms of um, developing information sources is environmental scanning, which can encompass a variety of things, legislative tracking, staying current on the latest news, reading journal articles, etc. As an example, we have an external agency that compiles the newest articles on sodium. Sodium is an issue that um, impacts cardiovascular health. And so we get a um, bi-weekly report from this external agency that gives us the latest and greatest on what's going on with sodium. Um, and then we use that to communicate with our partners what the most critical aspects of, of the latest findings are. So by tracking the latest findings on sodium as it relates to nutrition and cardiovascular health, we stay on top of this issue and we can anticipate possible questions or issues we may need to address as a division. Information management can be overwhelming to anyone trying to utilize it as an effective tool. We are inundated with information from multiple sources and often the challenge is not our ability to access the information, rather it's our ability to assess the information and call from what you receive the most essential pieces that need to be shared to advance your organization's goals. There are a wide variety of strategies available to public servants to support this effort. 
The key is to find something that works for you and enables you to effectively organize the information in a way that supports the needs of your organization. For example, as I've mentioned previously, I manage two teams at CDC. One team deals with policy and partnerships and the other team manages communications. These are two very large buckets of activities and our work supports the balance of the division across the board. As part of my leadership duties, I'm required to provide status updates on all of our major activities and projects to division leadership. And because we are a cross-cutting office and we support everybody in the division, these updates are pretty critical so that they have a good line of sight on what's going on. My approach has been to have each of my teams develop what I call situation reports every other week. And these reports highlight the key activities that are underway or planned by my unit. I receive these reports a couple days prior to my leadership meetings, review the information in them, and then highlight the information that I feel is most useful to share with the leadership team. This approach may not work for everyone, but it is becoming a manageable approach for me and my team. And in the end, the objective should be to utilize information in the most efficient and impactful way possible. And my leadership team, who I report to, has found this very useful. Now I want to address a, a practical application of information management. Um, and that is enterprise risk management. Um, and I'm going to review this tool for two reasons. First, this is a relatively new tool utilized by CDC. It's come down within the last five years or so. And so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with how it's, how it's been developed and um, how it's impacted you know, where I sit in the, in the agency. And the second reason is behaviors associated with enterprise risk management are things that we as public servants should engage in on a regular basis in order to avoid risks and take advantage of the opportunities. And so as you'll see through this discussion, even if you don't have a formal enterprise risk management system in your agency, practicing some of the behaviors associated with this system can benefit you and your organization down the line. I imagine most, if not all of you, are familiar with the concepts of risk and risk management. These are activities we will likely engage in at some point in our public service careers. In this context, risk is de defined as a challenge or a threat to organizational goals. And risk management is a coordinated effort to direct and control those challenges and threats. So what, what risks are posed to your organization? And how do you go about manage, managing them? Building off these definitions, enterprise risk management is a proactive agency-wide effort to identify and address issues early so that we can avoid reactive risk management, which is where we mostly we deal with this. The goal of enterprise risk management is to build an organizational system that, is tra that transparently encourages and supports the identification of any risk early on so that the organization can mitigate those issues on a proactive basis. So what we're doing here in, the, in simplest terms is we're looking at um, what potential risks are posed to our organization and how can, how can we come up with plans to address those risks before they happen or early on in the process so that the impact on the organization isn't that great. Here at CDC, we have an enterprise risk management system that extends throughout the agency, beginning at the division level ex with division risk managers, um, going up through national centers that have an enterprise risk management committee. And then if the risk is serious enough, going to the agency level enterprise risk committee for further action. Functionally, each division has an assigned risk manager that works with staff to identify potential enterprise risks, cat cat categorize those risks as high, medium, or low risks, develop mitigation plans for those anticipated risks, and share these identified risks with the agency-wide enterprise risk committee. This provides transparency to the upper echelons of the agency to potential risks and allows them to focus on the risks most pressing to CDC currently. One of my duties is to serve as the risk manager for my division. In this role, me and my staff collect information from our colleagues in the division, our partners, in our own environmental scans to identify potential enterprise risks, raise those risks to a higher level if necessary, 
and work on plans to address those risks in the future should they happen. It's a very proactive approach to dealing with, with risks to an organization. One real world example I can offer you is COVID and state grantees. So over the last two years, much like CDC, state health departments have pulled staff from everywhere to help manage the epidemic. As a result, state programs supported by federal funds have not been implemented to the fullest extent possible. And states will likely have large balances of unspent funds when their grant cycle concludes. And this creates a problem for CDC and, the, and, and Congress. No one likes to see large amounts of unspent federal dollars. And to be clear, it's just not you know, the fault of those state agencies. You know, a number of um, things that we support, include medical screenings, have been put, put to the side by folks in the public because they're, they were afraid to go out and were self-isolating and that type of thing. So it's, there's a lot of issues that go into this in addition to the fact that state employees have been pulled to work on COVID. But it doesn't change the fact that we're dealing with a potential large bucket of unspent dollars for every grant that CDC put out to, puts out the door. This is an agency-wide risk. It's not just a risk that exists with my division. It was identified about a year ago and we as an agency collectively are working to devise plans to help us avert any risks associated with large balances of unspent federal dollars at the state level. And part of this, honestly, is just notifying folks in Congress and our partners that this may indeed come to fruition and we may need some help managing that process. Um, but like I said, those, those risks are, are currently being, um, those risk plans are currently being developed. Now, not all risks are the same. And so after collecting all of our information and identifying the risks we engage in, um, we engage in an exercise called heat mapping. In essence, we're plotting which of the risks are most dangerous by assessing three issues. The likelihood the risk will occur, the impact this risk could have on the agency, and the speed of onset for a given risk. These three factors are assessed through staff and partner discussions and really represent a true group effort to assess the information associated with each risk. Once the assessment is complete, we plot each risk on what's called a heat map, which essentially identifies the risk of greatest concern for us, with the highest risks falling in the upper right section of the heat map, which in this case is colored red, and the lowest risks falling in the lower left of the, of the heat map, the green section. The medium risks obviously are in the yellow section. We then develop initial mitigation plans for the highest risks so that if they do present themselves, we at least have an initial plan in place to address it and can adjust moving forward. And, and that's really the key aspect of enterprise risk management is being proactive about your approach to not only identifying the risk that may be presented to your organization, but also coming up with a plan to address that risk. Um, now, Will that plan mitigate the risk entirely? Probably not. You're probably going to have to adjust your plan moving forward, but at least you have a plan in place to start with, and you can try to minimize the impact of, of that risk on your agency or program. Now, as I alluded to before, not every organization has a formal enterprise risk process like we do at CDC. And again, it's very new at, at this agency. Um, that said, we can all engage in this type of effort at some level. It's important for us to um, make our leadership aware of risks as they become apparent to us um, so that leadership can take action to mitigate those risks to either the program or the organization. So I want to encourage each and every one of you to um, make sure that you raise those issues with your leadership as you become aware of them and give them the opportunity to address those risks and mitigate the, the fallout that may result from, from a particular risk actually occurring. Merely identifying risks for leadership can be very helpful. And I often tell my folks to use the Washington Post test. If you don't wanna see this risk on the front page of the Washington Post, say something early and say something often so that the issue can be addressed and we can avoid or at least significantly reduce the impact from a risk actually occurring. Now, information management is a very complex topic, and we've really only scratched the surface of this issue. 
In fact, there are entire courses offered on the topic. I hope you've, I've, I've given you a good overview of information management, as well as an example of a practical application that can be used moving forward in your career. Thank you again for your attention, and if you have any questions, please email or call me.